So my name is Sarah Zukoff. I'm an entomologist at Kansas State University. I'm an assistant professor there and my office is actually located at the Research and Extension Center in Garden City. Well, I came to talk to the ag professionals about the sugarcane aphid um, and uh, some IPM issues that surround that and um, some of the things they can expect for 2018. And um, I guess the thing that we talked about more than anything was um, beneficial insects and what role they'll have coming up and um, some of the varieties that are out there that are uh, maybe helpful for, for farmers to plant and anything uh, new research-wise that they were interested in. So there was a lot of good questions. Yeah, so it's very important to um, identify the aphids uh, as sugarcane aphids before farmers decide to treat. Um, there are several other aphids that can be found in sorghum and uh, the sugarcane aphid looks similar to them superficially, but if you have hand lenses, then you could usually tell them apart. Um, and that was a kind of a big question that I had from consultants and farmers the last couple years is, um, you know, is this a sugarcane aphid or not? And um, There's some, especially like green bugs, look like them and uh, they can be confusing and a farmer can save a lot of money by not spraying another type of aphid and actually making sure that they're spraying the sugarcane aphid instead. So when you're scouting for aphids, the sugarcane aphids, um, you want to look for the honeydew. That's usually the first thing people notice. It's the shiny substance that they, they produce. It's their, their, um, their poop. <laughs> um, and if you look for the honeydew, then uh, that'll usually tell you that you have aphids in the field, but then you have to identify them. Um, and if you have you know, around 50 to 125 aphids per leaf on about 20 to 30 percent of your plants, then that's considered threshold. Um, especially if it's going to continue to be warm and they're going to continue to reproduce. Um, of course, that'll be um, a little bit different for some of the resistant hybrids. For some of the resistant hybrids, they can handle quite a bit of aphids um, and you still won't have much damage. So it's kind of a hybrid by hybrid basis um, when it comes to threshold. But as a general rule, 50 to 125 aphids per leaf on 20 to 30 percent of the plants is what we look at for treatment. Um, I had a lot of questions about chinch bugs. Um, they were a problem the last two years. Uh, they're, they're kind of a sporadic problem anyway, but we seem to have a little bit of a resurgence of them this last couple years um, with a lot of the predators being a little bit busy with some of the other uh, sugarcane aphids. Um, so some of those questions were, you know, I haven't, I haven't heard people talk about chinch bugs in a little while out in western Kansas. Uh, so that was, that was um, a little bit different. And then we had folks that were wondering about burning. Uh, I guess that's a practice for for some pests. <laughs> I've never heard of it, but um, that was something that I didn't have any experience with, but I imagine that burning a plant would be the same as uh, when you spray insecticide, you'd have to get good coverage. Apparently there's a stage of the plant that is um, a young and you can burn it and get rid of pests, but not, well, I wouldn't suggest it for these pests. 